Hey guys, so very happy to announce that I have purchased my first 3D printer and it came in the mail um, two or three days ago, I think three days now, and I got the Elgu Mars, uh, it's a resin printer for you guys not familiar, there's tons and tons of videos, I've just been devouring YouTube tutorials on everything 3D printers lately, because now I think that they're finally affordable. I've been having my eye on 3D printers for a while, and when I checked it recently, you know, the prices were low enough and the quality was high enough that I thought that, yes, it's definitely worth it now. I think this one was only $250. And there's a ton of different brands out there that offer pretty much around the same thing, and you can get a more expensive printer. I don't know if it's worth it, but I'm going to just break down... Uh, this one and the first couple test prints that I did I took a bunch of pictures of my setup and everything and I just thought uh, it, This would be a good first video on it. I've done 3d printing before but I've always gone through um, a third-party website usually Shapeways or um, Sculpteo is another good one But I'm really happy to be getting into it myself and it and once you put in that initial upfront cost, the resin's really cheap and you can get a ton of prints out of it. So, uh, I'm just gonna go through all these pictures that I took. Uh, here it is set up, this is my garage. And this is right before doing my first test print. I did a little bust of uh, the Nick Cage model and that, I think, requires a whole video in itself, like taking a, a model that's ready for, like, um, render with uh, textures and X-Gen hair and everything and converting that over as best you can to um, a printable version of that. Um, I probably will make a tutorial about that, but this one's really just going over the printer and the prints. So yeah, this is set up to do um, my first test print, which was a smaller bust of Nick Cage. And this LCD touchscreen is really cool and it shows you what you're about to print, which is really useful if your file naming structure isn't good. And this is the first print that came out. And you, and you can see it came out really good and the detail's really good um, for the scale that it was printed out. You notice down here, um, there's a little bit of chipping and that's because where I put the supports um, to aid the model printing. And that's a whole nother topic. There's a ton of tutorials uh, about that online. Shout out to 3D Printing Pro, uh, his YouTube channel, very, very useful. I pretty much followed his advice, although I think that I could have done a better job placing them underneath um, and without getting these little uh, chips. And you can see down here as well, I could have placed a few more supports. This bottom of the base didn't come out perfectly flat. Um, here's another one. You can You can see where the supports broke off. And back here as well. I think that maybe I could have also shaped the bust a little bit better and made like more of a U shape and then it wouldn't have had such a huge flat surface area underneath. Uh, and here's a video of the second test print that I did uh, as it's going. And this is just a larger bust that I did. I, I, I changed the settings slightly um, I use a, the program Chitu Box to set up the supports and slice the model up and get it ready for print. And I'll probably do another tutorial on that as well, along with like you know getting the model ready for print. And here you can see this is really cool. It shows you what layer you're on, um, and you can see that I hollowed the model out to save some money on resin. And then. It shows you what layer you're on, uh, how much time has elapsed, and how much time you have left. So this was a really long print. This was like 13 hours and some change. All right, and here's some more images of it flat on the table. And you can see how down here at the base that some of the supports kind of left uh, a little bit of warping. Uh, and this is what it looks like in Chitu Box. This was my support setup. And... This was for the smaller Nick Cage. So um, I recorded a short video of the process of uh, cleaning up and removing the supports of the larger Nick Cage, uh, which was my second test print, and I'll, I'll just play that for you guys now. So this is the Nick Cage large test print version 2. So I already printed out a smaller one, and I 
up this, the, uh, the resolution and uh, hopefully it came out with some more detail just gonna turn off the machine it's so, like I think last night the, the, the only time you really need to wear a mask is when you first take this thing off I got like a whoosh of resin but the resin really does not smell that bad but. yeah you can definitely smell it it like builds up within this container I'm gonna unscrew this guy. The holes are at the bottom. Hopefully, I can get some more resin out of here. I'm gonna use this piece. Look like this. Oops, I'm dripping it everywhere. Hopefully, I'm able to get a little bit more out of that. Upside down because the holes are at the bottom of the uh, the base. So if there's resin trapped within there, it's got to drip out. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna get any more drops of resin out of this. All right. Well. Soapy water. Yes, yeah, so this is the uh, water rot wash re resin. So I just have like an old date box filled with soapy water. I'm just gonna rinse the whole thing off. Definitely need a bigger box for larger prints. There you go. I'll just wash this off a little bit and just leave it on the paper towel and then really rinse this guy off. And the resin it was really nice because it came with this brush. It looks like these supports are just falling off. The water's a little bit warm too. Oh, yeah, look at that. So this is a combination of medium, light, and heavy supports, but it looks like they just all came right off. Hmm. Yeah. Look at the drainage holes. <laughs> so I'm gonna wash this guy off. Oh you can hear the water going in. He's definitely hollow. <laughs> Oops, look at that. Looks like we got a piece of the, uh, one of the supports stuck to his back. Looks like I'm going to have to polish that. The bottom too, you can see it's a little bit pockmarked. But no one's really going to be looking at that side. Crazy. It's not all that focus on this face, sorry. No, it's all good. Wash all the resin off. Best you can. I've got this like makeshift curing box over here. Doesn't look like much more is going to be coming out of that. I'll just wipe this guy down. And I don't know if this was done on purpose, but the box the resin came in is perfect. 
as like a little makeshift UV curing station. So you just put this in here, and I've got just like a little UV mag light, and then I can just close this around and turn on the mag light. Let me put this, this back on first. Maybe it'd be better just to do this. It's like a little Nick Cage tanning bed. A little, a little Nick Cage <laughs> tanning bed. Let me put them up like this. Turn on the light. Oh, look at this. that. Close the box. Check back in three minutes. <laughs> All right, and then this is uh, an image of the larger print, which also pretty happy with. Um, for my second try, and my lovely fiance was kind enough to shoot that video and then take some pictures with her nice camera. And this is kind of like a dramatic lighting, uh, kind of a happy accident because the uh, the camera settings weren't weren't set correctly. And here they are side by side, and you can do a little detail comparison. They both have that sort of warping at the base, and I'm I'm sure I could get this out just by sanding it. But it, the, the detail is, is really impressive. Very, very happy with this purchase. I definitely encourage anybody to, uh, to, get, to pick one of these up. Uh, the Elegu Mars has been great. And from what I can tell, uh, the Anycubic Photon uh, is another really good one, uh, another resin printer. I don't have any experience with FDM printers. Here's a side-by-side. -side. Now you'll notice on this one, on the larger print, there's like this uh, uh, banding that went through, this line, and I think that has to do, based on the tutorials that I watch, with the suction um, every time the model lifts up from the print bed, and then it can cause a, a, a shift, and then that gives this like banding. I think there's, you can see like two or three bands here, maybe there's one up here. And I think I showed in the video, you can see this is where a little bit of the support structure stuck to the model. And you can buff this all out, but obviously it's better if uh, the supports are set up correctly and you don't have to worry about sanding your model or buffing your model. Here's some more. Some of these are a little silly. Here's a cage in the uh, in the uh, our little potted plant. Oh, and here he is uh, next to this like little Buddha statue that we got at some thrift shop. So that's pretty much it for the pictures. Um, just a short video. Wanted to go over. I'm re really excited about the printer, and I'll be doing a lot more uh, videos on 3D printing. And I'm hoping to print out a lot of crazy stuff with the. Uh, the printer, maybe you can get a second printer. Uh, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Please subscribe and share all that good stuff. It really helps me out. Uh, and until the next video, thanks for watching, guys.